rejected me, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. Oh, pity me, my friends, for such is my sense of duty that once out of my adventures, I shall feel myself bound to devote myself heart and soul to your extermination. Poor lad, poor lad. Well, Frederick. If you conscientiously feel that it is your duty to destroy us, we cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and chance the consequences. Besides, we could offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We don't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why, but I, we don't. I know why, but alas, I mustn't tell you. It wouldn't be right. And why not, my boy? Oh, it's only half past eleven, and you are still one of us until the clock strikes twelve. True. And until then, you are bound to protect our interests. Well, then, it is my duty as a pirate to tell you that you are too tender-hearted. For instance, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves. When you attack a stronger party, you invariably get thrashed. Oh. <laughs> there is some truth in that. Then again, you make it a point of never harming an orphan. Of course! We are orphans ourselves and know what it is. Yes, but it is got about. And what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. The last three ships proved to be manned entirely by orphans. So? We had to let them go. One would think that Great Britain's mercantile navy was recruited solely from our orphan asylums, which we know is not the case. But, but hang it all, you wouldn't have us absolutely merciless. There's my difficulty. Before 12 o'clock, I would. After 12, I wouldn't. Who was ever a man placed in so delicate a situation? And Ruth? Your own Ruth, whom you love so well, and who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart. What is to become of her? Oh, she will take you with her. <laughs> well, Ruth, I feel some difficulty about you. It is true that I admire you very much, but I have been constantly at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I have seen during that time. I think it is a sweet face. It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. I said, I think it is. That is my impression. But as I have never had an opportunity of comparing you with other women, it is just possible I may be mistaken. True. But what a terrible thing it would be to marry this innocent person and then find out that she is, on the whole, Play. Oh, Ruth. Ruth is very well. Very well indeed. <laughs> yes, there are the remains of a fine woman about Ruth. Uh, do you really think so? I do. Well, then I shall not be so selfish as to take her from you. In justice to her and in consolation to you, I shall leave her behind. No, 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 Frederick, this cannot be. We are rough men. <laughs> but we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive me of thy love. I think I am right in saying there is not one here who would rob thee of this inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. Not one! No, I thought there wasn't. Keep thy love, Frederick. Keep thy love. You're very good, I'm sure. Well, it's the top of the tide, and we must be off. Farewell, Frederick. When your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. I will. By the love I have for you, I swear it. Would that you would render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. No, Frederick, it cannot be. I don't think much of our profession, but contrasted with uh, respectability, it is comparatively honest. No, Frederick, I shall live and die a pirate king! <laughs> But I'll be true to 
myself in this alarming costume. No, no, I must remain in close concealment till I can appear in decent clothing. Suppose we took 
in this effective but alarming costume. But under these peculiar circumstances, it is my bounden duty to inform you that your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. But who are you, sir, speak? I am a pirate. A pirate? Pirate! Ladies, do not shun me. This evening I am renounced my vile profession. And to that end, of pure and peerless maidens, O oh, blushing buds of ever blooming beauty, I saw at heart, I saw at heart, employ your kind assistance. How oh, pitiful is it?
lose our senses. Men who stick it, no offenses. We'll all not be here. I receive that dreadful trade is pray you get to as your names. The coast is clear. No, we must not lose our senses. If we stick it, no offenses. We should not be here. Precisely what is meant by commissariat. When I have learned what progress has been made in modern gunnery. When I know more of tactics than a novice in a nunnery. <laughs> then 
shot when I'm a smattering of elemental strategy. Strategy. Strat strategy. Uh, strategy, catagy, matagy. Satagy. From a military knowledge, I'm packing an adventure. It has only been brought down to the beginning of the century, but still, another vegetable, animal, and mineral. I am the very model of a modern in general. <laughs> Myself, I should like to have some idea of what's going on. Oh, Papa! Come with me! I'll explain it. Two words. We propose to marry your daughter. Dear me! Against the will, Papa! Against the will! No, but you mustn't do that. May I ask? This is a, a picturesque uniform, but I'm not familiar with it. What are you? We are all single gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I gathered that. Anything else? No, nothing else. Oh, Papa, don't believe them. They are pirates, the famous pirates of Penzance. <laughs> yeah! The pirates of Penzance. Ah! Well, I've often heard of them. Ah! All except this gentleman, who was a pirate once, but who is out of his indentures today and who aims to lead a blameless life evermore. But stop at it. I object to pirates as sons-in-law. We object to major generals as fathers-in-law. Ah! Oh, we, we wave that point. We do not oppress it. We look over it. <laughs> huh. An idea. And do you mean to say that you would deliberately rob me of these, the sole remaining props of my old age, and leave me to go through the remainder of my years, unfriended, unprotected, and alone. Well, yes, that's the idea. <laughs> Tell me, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Oh, oh dash it all! Oh, here we are again! No. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Orphan? Yes, orphan. Have you ever known what it is to be one? I say orphan! 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 I don't think we quite understand one another. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? And you say orphan. As I understand you, you are merely repeating the word orphan to show that you understand me. I, I didn't repeat the word orphan. Pardon me, you did indeed. I only repeated it once. True, but you repeated it. It's not orphan. Stop. I think I see where we're getting confused. When you say orphan, do you mean orphan, a person who has lost his parents? Or orphan frequently? Frequently. No, only once. Exactly. You said often frequently. Only once. <laughs> oh, men of dark and dismal fate, <laughs> forgo your cruel employ. <laughs> Have pity on my lonely state. I am an orphan boy, an orphan boy, an orphan boy. Joy. 
coins. See, at your feet they kneel. Your heart you cannot steal. Against the sad, sad tale of the lonely. <laughs> Orphan boy, poor Let's 
try, dear Mabel. But why does he sit night after night in this drafty old ruin? Why do I sit here? To escape the pirate's clutches, I described myself as an orphan. And heaven help me, I'm no orphan. I came here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their pardon for having brought dishonor upon the family escutcheon. You forget, sir, you only bought the property a year ago, and the stucco in your baronial hall is scarcely dry. Frederick, in this chapel are ancestors. You cannot deny that. With the estate, I bought the chapel and its contents. I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I know whose ancestors they are, and I shudder to think that their descendants by purchase, if I may so describe myself, should have brought dishonor upon what I have no doubt was an unstained escutcheon. Be confident. Had you not acted as you did, these reckless men would have surely called in the nearest clergyman and married your large family on the spot. I thank you for your proffered solace, but it is unavailing. I assure you, Frederick, that such is the anguish and remorse that I feel at the abominable falsehood by which I escaped these easily deluded pirates, that I would rush to their simple-minded chief this very night and confess all! No. Did I not fear that the consequences would be most disastrous to myself? At what hour does your expedition march against these scoundrels? At eleven. And before midnight, I hope to have atoned for my involuntary association with the pestilent scourges by sweeping them from the face of the earth! And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only await my orders. Then, Frederick, let your escort lion hearted be summoned to receive a general's blessing. Ere they depart upon their dread adventure. Dear sir, they come. <laughs>
Lauren so lack No more chance of coming back So perhaps it would be wise Not to carve or criticize For it's very evident These attentions are well meant Yes, it's very evident These attentions are well meant Evident, yes, well meant Evident are oh, yes, well meant When the fall is here Coincidence. 
I shouldn't be surprised if we're owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. Yo, are the victim of this clumsy arrangement, having been born in Nipio the 29th of February. And so, by a simple analytical process, you'll easily discover that though you've lived 21 years yet, if we go by birthdays, you're only five. And a little bit over. <laughs> <laughs>
Wait to start you soften with his lies. And in return tonight, the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, tonight the traitor dies.
1840, I of age shall be. I'll then return and claim you, I declare it. It seems so long. Swear that till then you will be true to me. Yes, I'll be strong. By all the stand these dead and gone, I swear. Honest man, our feelings we 
with difficulty smothered, Cody smothered. When constabulary duties to be done, to be done. I'll take one consideration with another, with another. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Ah. When constabulary duties to be done, to be done. Lot is not a happy one. Happy one. When the enterprising burglar is not a burglar, not a burglar. When the cutthroat is not occupied in crime, crime in crime. He loves to hear the little brook a gurgling, brook a gurgling. Listen to the merry village chime, village chime. When the coster's finished jumping on his mother, on his mother, he loves to lie a basking in the sun, in the sun. I'll take one consideration with another, with another. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Constabulary duties to be done, to be done. Our policeman's lot is not a happy one. Happy
yes. The Major General comes. Yes, yes. The Major General comes. Yes, yes. The Major General comes. Tormented with the anguish dread of falsehood unatoned, I lay upon my sleepless bed and tossed and turned and groaned. The man who finds his conscience ache no peace at all enjoys. And as I lay in bed awake, I thought I heard a noise. He thought he heard a noise. Ha ha! No, all is still in tail on him, my mind is set at ease. So still the scene, it must have been the sighing of the
face to see she worked upon our feelings. Revenge is sweet and flavors all our dealings. With courage ran, resolution manly, for death prepared on her general Stanley. statement hears because with all our faults we love our house appears I pray you pardon me ex-pirate king peers will be peers and youth will have its fling resume your ranks and legislative duties and take my daughters, all of whom are beauties. <laughs> 